Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube but also over on Instagram as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing, it is the 11th of July. Welcome along, how has everyone's week been? I have had the most fantastic day. Um, you'll see a bit later, some of my projects didn't quite get to where I hoped that they would be this evening uh, because I had a call just before six o'clock to say there were some spaces on the evening trip to go dolphin watching so that's where I've been this evening. Um, it was just absolutely phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I've taken quite a few little videos of it, which I'll put on to the end of this. If you want to come on the dolphin watching trip with me, we found dolphins, we found all sorts of birds, seals, all sorts of different things. It was amazing. And the bay was like an absolute mill pond. I have never ever seen it so calm and so flat. And it was warm and it was beautiful. Almost sunset, not quite, but it was definitely that time of, that time of evening so if you're interested I will I will put that footage on the end you have to excuse my hair today I got off the boat it's it's a rib boat so a rigid hulled inflatable boat um, and it goes like the absolute clappers it looks a little bit like a lifeboat um, but the it's got two engines on it which are bigger than the engines that they put on the lifeboat and um, it just goes like the absolute clapper so I got off of it looking like I was that scene from Bridget Jones's diary you know where she gets out of the convertible car and her hair is like a like a beehive so I got out looking like that and so this was pretty much the best that I could that I could muster this evening so I have got quite a bit to share with you this evening I have got and reminding myself I have got what have I actually finished I've got one full, one finished, one thing that I finished this week. I've got three things that are FFO issues. Uh, they would have been FFOs had I not gone dolphin watching. Um, I've got a new start. I've got a project that I've done quite a bit on. I've got a freebie and I've got a little bit of haul as well. So without further ado, I'm going to show you my FFO issues. So this is my first one. And this was my crush. Yeah. Now this is going to be an issue. There we go. This is my cross stitch camp stitch for last month. So this is my Barbara Anna Garden of Dreams. Um, it was a stitch long through Creative Poppy. I think now the chart has been released. It's stitched on 32 count Poltergeist by Silk Weaver and it's backed in some turquoise let's try and bring it back a little bit some turquoise velvet that I hand dyed so you can see what I haven't quite done yet is I haven't quite finished the sewing up so it's stuffed with um, lizard litter with crushed walnut shells which I'll put the link down below for where I get mine from I do get it from a shop called internet reptile and then the other thing that I was going to do put some of this on the outside so this is a hand dyed chenille trim and I'm just gonna put it around the edge so there'll be that nice dark turquoise all around the outside so I got my chenille trim the hand dyed stuff from I think they're called 21st century yarns but I will link them down below but you can get I think they do a multi-pack of about 10 different coloured chenille yarns two meters of each which is quite handy for, for trims and things like that so that was my first nearly FFO this is my second nearly FFO and as you can see let me just do a quick fettle. There it is, otherwise I'll have walnut shells everywhere. This was my second nearly FFO. This is Farm Fresh, which is a freebie chart that I showed a couple of videos ago by Hands On Design. And I just stitched it on a piece of 28 count Zweigart in a colour that I don't know. And I'm going to finish it with a little bit of Lady Dot Creates trim in Motherload. Now I think this trim's quite thick for a little pillow like this, but I think it can take it. I think it can take it. 
so it will be on the edge like that. Excuse my fingers in the way. There we go. And then my last FFO-ish was my cross stitch camp project this month for July, which was a stitch, not a stitcher that was new to me, a designer that was new to me. So I picked out from Etsy Blackbird Cross, no, Black Work Bird Cross Stitch Pattern by Cherry Wheeler or Sherry Wheeler. And there are several others in this kind of same vein. So I've stitched mine on 32 count vintage country mocker and I have got a big enough piece to do plenty of others. And again, I need a little bit of sewing up to do. This one I have stuffed with some fibre fill because I've made a little hanging pillow and I don't want it to be filled with the walnut shells because it would be too heavy. And I've actually just backed it with a little piece of vintage country mocker as well, which I don't do very often. I usually back it with something different, contrasting fabric, but this time I decided just to use a bit more of the same fabric and I'll hang a couple of little buttons and a year charm on the back there just for a little bit of interest on the back. Now it needs, because it's not sewn up at the back or at the bottom, I haven't given it a proper squidge around and made sure it's properly square, but I loved stitching that. And I used black coffee, I think, which is a gentle arts. I think I'll put it down at the bottom if it was anything different. Now, if you remember from last week, I showed you I had bought this wool winder and I was planning on using it to display some little hanging pillows. So just to check that my idea would work. Whoops. There, I can hang a little pillow off of it and if I open up them a little bit more, oops, sorry, it's falling off the edge there. If I open it up a little bit more, I can hang other ones off of there and I can hang another one off of there as well if I want to. Let's just see if I can hang it so it will show better. There we go. So I can't wait to make a few more of those to decorate my wool, mine, my wool winder with. Too many W's in that sentence. Too many W's. And then I had a finish. I had a start and a finish actually. Um, I said that I had wanted, for part of my cross stitch camp, I'd wanted to stitch three Barbara Annas. Now when I said that, I hadn't realised there were going to be different prompts for each month. So obviously with this month being a new to me, I couldn't do Barbara Anna. So I did my, my new to me one and I'm really pleased I did because I love it. But I still wanted to do another Barbara Anna. So I kind of set up a little rebel stitch, a little midnight stitch of my very own. And where have I put the board? I stitched Strawberry Time, which I believe is in the summer 2019 edition of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And it may be a chart that you can buy in its own right now. I'm not sure. And I stitched this on a piece of 28 count. Did I bring the piece of... No, I didn't bring the fabric bag up. I think it's called Slightly Summer by Sparklies. And I got it in a grab bag when I bought some um, fabric from a D stash. And I changed the colours on her because I wanted to do sort of patriotic colours. So here's my finish. Now I don't know if it's going to pick up very well. The fabric is actually got a pale blue, almost like a pale blue smoke running through it. So there she is. And I stitched her using all sorts of different things. The black is Gentle Arts Onyx, the blue is a DMC. The red is a Caron Water Lilies Cardinal. Uh, 
this is a DMC. Again, the Caron water lilies. I put some little beads. I'm trying not to hide myself. But some little beads on the strawberries. The grey I was a little bit stuck on. I knew kind of what colour grey I wanted for the hat and the boots, but I couldn't find it. And then as I was finishing up stitching what I could last night, I dropped my scissors down the back of the sofa. Now usually I'm a bit lazy and I just have a quick look around see if I can find another pair of scissors and then I'll do a, a mass retrieval which I think I've spoken about before but I couldn't find another pair of scissors so I had to look down the back of the sofa and lo and behold there was a little random pack of grey silks for you that I had in a grey in a grab bag nothing else down the back of the sofa which was unusual because usually there's at least one tv remote down there um but just this manna from heaven this little pack of a grey silks for you in a perfect colour so I finished it there and I'm gonna make a stand-up I've never made a stand-up before I've started to look at Vonna's tutorial and I think it's gonna be okay I think I'll be able to do it I've made drums and all sorts of other things before so I can't imagine it's gonna to be too taxing but yeah I fancy making her into a stand-up I'm super pleased the way she turned out. So that was my start and finish. My, let's do my random start. And this really was a random start. This was about half past 10 at night on the 4th of July. I suddenly almost realized it was the 4th of July. And then I realized that I had the One Nation stitch by bygone stitches now i'll have to put a picture of it up because i haven't got the print out of the chart but i'm sure you've seen it it's the one with the american flag but it's the names of all the states and then the stars so i'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count neutral by victorian motto that i had when i was getting their um monthly subscription and this is where I am so far. So we have New Jersey and that will be Pennsylvania. And I've just started a little bit on the white because I just wanted to make sure the white showed up. And it does, it shows up more in person because I'm using Silks For You for this. And I think I'll be using the Silks For You in the blue, the red and the white. And I because it's a 36 count I'm just doing one strand and I just wanted to make sure that it's showed up although I may possibly backtrack on that just thinking about it and pick out a sulky white so it's a little bit thicker so it will stand out a little bit more I might investigate that a bit tomorrow the blue and the red will be absolutely fine but Although the white stands out more in person, I think I'd like it to be even bolder. And I think two strands of silk will be too thick, so I may investigate one strand of white silky. So there. Uh, yep, yeah. and as I said, I realised it was the 4th of July, and I've been thinking about this chart, and I thought, well, if you're going to start it on any day, you better start it today. So I did. I just found the fabric, found the threads, started it. Thank heavens for stash because what would I do when I get these little whims? What would I do? <laughs> and my last project that I've done quite a bit on this week is this one. Welcome Summer by The Drawn Thread. I'm sure you've seen this before. I got this from Chris at The Nimble Thimble haven't been along to their website yet check it out it's it's good it's got unusual things on there but loads more in the shop as well so if there's something you're looking for you can always give give her a call and I had a bit of oh, I haven't even pulled the final stitch through look at that hold please talk amongst yourselves there we go let's just tuck that behind there for now I was debating what to do with the flag because obviously the flag in the middle is the American flag 
and I was going to change mine. I'm slouching now. I was going to change mine for the Union Jack, but when I tried to chart it out to fit in the space that was there, it was just going to be too, it was going to make it look too weird. So I actually went with just the English flag because I am English. Although I live in Wales, I wasn't born in Wales, which is probably a failing on my part, but um, I was born in England and I lived in England for the vast majority of my life. So that is where I am. So I've got the flag of St George in the middle and then I'm just working on the blue of the W and then it'll be a case of going back and filling in all of the um, other little bits and bobs, the specialty stitches. There's a, another bird that goes in there that's mostly cross stitch and there are some little beads that go on this one. And then this one will be framed in the same way that I did my Hello Spring to sit above my mantle. So I will get it glazed because we do have an open fire. Um, admittedly not in the summer, although this is Wales. So at any given moment we may need to have an open fire. Um, so it just protects it from the dust just a little bit. Okay, freebie, freebie, freebie. I have gone back to one of my favourites. And if you don't follow Melissa from Pink It and Punkin Blogspot, uh, then you should do. Because I don't think I've ever seen anybody put out more freebies than she does. And it's called the Beeskep. 1869 croc and this is the colour chart for it and you can see it's just a little croc with a giant beehive on the top a giant beehive and I love it I really like it she's done a whole host of little bee ones so um, there's this one, there's ones which say, just say B, ones which say home. You could build up a really nice little collection of them. So I'll put the link for that down below. Go and print yourself a copy of one of those. And then that leaves me with haul. I've only got a little bit of haul, a little bit of haul this, this, uh, this time. I did, I did hold off and buy, and not buy, should I say, the new um, Modern Folk Embroidery sampler that Laura from uh, Brenda and Laura, Brenda and Serial Starter, showed yesterday. It was absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to put a picture of it up here um, because I will be getting it. Just I just haven't got around to, to downloading it yet. But uh, yes, that's not put on part of my haul this week. Uh, neither is my lost parcel. Yodel have decided that they have no clue where in Pembrokeshire they slung it, which hedge they slung it in. Um, they could not retrieve my parcel. And so I've had to go back to the company that I bought it from and they are going to redo and then send it back out again. So, um, yeah, Yodel. <laughs> I've got oh, nothing to say about them at the moment. Right, what have I been buying? The first one, actually, I just wanted to show you. It's not cross stitch, although I, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And I was actually shopping today for a present for from the department, from the rest of the science department, to um, our lovely colleague, Alan, who has just had a baby. Um, well, him and his wife have obviously just had a baby. And I bought their present. And I saw this, which is a little Welsh lady hanging pillow. I just thought it was so cute. It's actually lavender scented as well. So it's not cross stitch, but it is handmade and beautiful. So yeah, just a little um, sort of craft shop in Cardigan. It's called the Crafters Kutch. So if you're ever in Cardigan, do go and have a look there. They have some lovely, some lovely things. So yeah, a little Welsh lady. And then I bought on eBay. So 
something I've been wanting to get for quite a while but it doesn't always turn up that, it, that uh, often because it's out of print and it is Maria Selby Humphrey by Blackbird Designs. Now obviously we heard of the super super sad news that um, Barb from Blackbird Designs passed away uh, this week and you know my heart goes out to her family and to Alma and just terrible but so so grateful for for what she's left us with and all of these fantastic charts that herself and um and alma have put together for us and as i said this one's out of print currently although you never know what, what happens with blackbird designs sometimes they get reprinted and i think i might stitch and leave her initials on this one which is called my home because she's credited as designing it and also stitching this one so I think that would be a nice one to do and just leave her initials on it as well so there's that one if you haven't seen this booklet there is the big sampler a drum and a smaller sampler so there's the drum if you want a closer look at the drum, if you go and have a look on Whilst Iris Naps and April May June's Instagram, the drum from this book was part of one of their exchanges. I think Christina stitched it for April, but I'm sorry if I'm wrong. And then that is the main sampler, which I really, really like the colours in. Really like. And the very last thing that I bought this week, after my um, lovely book buy last week, I bought another book. Um, and this one is by Carol Humphrey, who wrote the quite famous um, Quaker book about the Aquith samplers. And this is called Sampled Lives. Now this one also turns up in some quite fantastic prices. But I bought mine from the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. So if you go onto their website, and I'll link it down below, you can just buy yourself a copy for 20 quid. So yeah, don't be paying more for this one because it's, it's not hard to get. And a bit like the other book, it has got lots and lots of pictures of samplers that are within the Fitzwilliam collection and if I got, ever got a chance to go I would love to go and have a look um, but this one does have a bit more a bit more of a kind of history to it rather than like the other one the history is told through the samplers this one has got more of a history written rather than just through the samplers but it's a phenomenal book and it's got so many interesting interesting things in it there's a few Quakers in there lots of band samplers a few Bristol kind of marking sampler style ones oh look at that a sampler pocket I say I like that Mm. It only came the other day, so I haven't had much of a chance to look at it. Anyway, that is me for this week. So not very long, um, but I will put my videos that I took from the dolphin watching this evening and hope you will enjoy those too. I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers. Black Reserve belongs to the Wildlife Trust. So if you've been to the reserve in Kilgarren yet, it's the same people that own the island. Now most of the birds that we have here, they are residential and they're kind of coastal bird curl on the end of it. And there is a very young barnacle goose swimming away straight in front of us. <laughs> Just coming out. Just back home.
looking for his little heads will suddenly bob up and try and have a look at us.